Okay, hi everyone. I'm Brad Mizellis, and I am impersonating right now, just think of me as Sven. I'm Sven. I work at Tupperware Inc. And I'm responsible for an analytics app. It's a J2EE app that I've been working on for the last couple of years. And I work in an agile fashion, and I roll out a new build to production every two weeks at the end of my sprints. But I'm constantly plagued by this problem that my development environment doesn't exactly match the production environment, and, and I, I'm constantly up at night during our, during our uh, maintenance window uh, with, the, with the operations people trying to tweak things so that in the morning my analytics app is available. And so I've been reading about uh, containers, and I finally convinced my boss to send me to DockerCon. And I went to DockerCon two weeks ago, and I'm walking around, sort of soaking in all of the energy, and I see the VMware booth. And I'm like, hey, our production environment runs on vSphere. Let me see what's going on over there. So I go to VMware's booth, and I meet Patrick. And Patrick tells me, Brad, you got to use Vic. Vic is awesome. It's exactly what you need. So I got back, and I asked my VI admin to install Vic on, uh, on our vSphere instance for me. And that's what he did. So I want to start just by giving you a look at what is in place at the start of my demo. So first of all, uh, my VI admin has deployed Vic. And Vic comes as an OVA. And when you deploy the Vic OVA, you get three processes there. You get a portal and a container registry. And you also get a program called Vic Machine. And Vic Machine is what you use to create something called a virtual container host. And a virtual container host is a endpoint that's mapped to a resource pool and acts like a Docker host. So once that host exists, I can use a Docker client. So here in my development desktop, I can use my browser to interact with this portal and this registry. And I could use my Docker client to interact with Vic Engine. And when I do it, I can create containers within the capacity that's been allocated to me through that resource pool. But I can do, I can create and destroy containers to my heart's content. So that's the setup for the demo. And now let me flip over to the demo. OK. Uh, so here I am at the login page for the registry. And my first step is that I need to create a project in which I am going to store my containers. So first step, log in. And uh, I'm going to create a new project. And this is going to be the project that I'm going to use for my production images. And you can see now that I have this new project, but it has no repositories in it yet. Now, in prep for this moment, where I'm going to deploy my first container into production, I have taken my J2E app and I have containerized it. So I already had a way to build it through my CICD system. But what I've done is I've written a Docker file that takes the same artifacts that I use to build my system but package it as a container. So I've got that container sitting on my desktop. And now that I've created this project in my registry, I can use the docker tag command to tag that image that's on my local file system so that I can push it up into the registry. So the next step is that I have to log in. Now I'm using the docker login command. And what that does is it logs me in from my client into the registry that I just created using Vic. And once I've done that, I could use the docker push command to upload my image into the registry. Now, this idea of having a private registry really excites my VI admin. Because when we start putting containers into production, we have to have control over what can actually be deployed within our environment. And if you just use a default Docker hub, who knows what you're going to get? So this is a private registry that's just accessible within Tupperware Inc. So now that that, um, now that, that, rep that, that 
tag is in my registry, you can see that there's this production images metabase with one tag. And another thing that totally excites our finance people is that Vic keeps a log of all the activity in this registry. Sarbanes-Oxley, we're here for you. So uh, now, let's take a look at the virtual container host. Within vCenter, uh, I've got this resource pool allocated, and I've got this virtual container host. Uh, it's a regular VM. This is the endpoint that Docker commands could be issued against in order to uh, run images. So uh, part of Vic is a little portlet that gives you some information about how to access this endpoint. Uh, and so you get two pieces of information, where on the network the Docker host can be reached, that's for the Docker client commands, and also where on the network the portal can be reached, that's a regular web address. So with that information, and of course my VI admin would have to send that to me because I don't have access to vCenter, um, I can set the environment variable Docker host, and from this point forward, my Docker commands will be, will be issued against the virtual container host. And let's just take a look at the information about this host. This is, from the Docker client's perspective, a regular virtual container host. But in Docker info, you can see that this is a vSphere integrated containers virtual container host. And so now, uh, I could run my metabase application that I've uploaded into my repository. And the first time that you run a Docker image, it gets pulled into the runtime environment, and then it starts running. And so if I run the docker ps command, uh, I can now see that I have one container running. So from the client, I have just deployed a container into production. Now let's take a look at what the VI admin gets to see. The VI admin now sees a new VM called production metabase, and, the, and the, uh, the, the container ID is appended as a suffix, so it's clear. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, I have access to a, to a dashboard to tell me what's going on in my container. So first, I need to go into my Vic portal and add that virtual container host uh, to, to my host inventory. And then once I've done that, I can take a look at the containers that are running in there. And so here you can see that my production metabase container is running. And if I go into the details, I have access to uh, runtime execution statistics. I can, I can look at the logs, uh, and I can troubleshoot if I need to without needing any special access uh, granted to me uh, by the VI admin. But I have, uh, you know, I have not had any, I, I don't need any access to vCenter itself to get this information. So I am just super excited that I've made this move to containers, and I'm going to keep studying and learn more about them. But, uh, but you know, I'm totally stoked.